The number one tip that I learned from following through on a kind of sketchy group ride is to... So a few days ago, I watched a couple videos on how to go on a large group motorcycle ride and stay safe. And then I went on a large motorcycle group ride with a bunch of sport bike riders and I quickly realized that at any given moment, only about 5% of sport bike riders were going to be following good group riding etiquette. Hi! I'm all about being here for a long time and a good time, so I want to make sure that I live to ride when I'm dead. So I'm making this video to tell you what to actually expect on a group ride. And I want to give you the secret tips and hacks for how to stay safe when you know almost everyone around you is gonna be a hooligan. Not me though. <laughs> this video is not gonna be a stay in staggered formation and have a good safe following distance. While those are obviously the gold standard that we're gonna be striving for on these group rides, it's rarely what happens in real life. And that's what you're dealing with in these large motorcycle group rides, unexpected realities. You don't have ideal conditions, no traffic, and everybody suddenly is a pro rider that knows what they're doing. So this video is those secret tips that no nobody really wants to talk about because it would mean that they have to talk about the messy and borderline illegal reality that motorcycle group rides can be. I got you though! The number one tip that I learned from following through on a kind of sketchy group ride is to leave if you have to. There is zero reason to stay if you feel unsafe, or in my case, since I'm comfortable with a little bit of risk, overly unsafe. Once I hit a threshold where I'm no longer in my comfort zone and I start cringing inside of my motorcycle helmet more than I'm actually smiling or having a good time. I'm out. It's not worth it to me to have my motorcycle wrecked or have it wrecked for me. I love Spicy Boy. He doesn't deserve that and neither does my wallet. Like I said, I want to ride for a long time and have a good time. In this scenario, I excused myself once the riding group got a little bit larger and then the weather started looking bleak as well. The last thing I wanted to do was sketchy riding in the rain in a big group ride. One way that you can peace out early without really leaving the group ride is just to know what the final destination is and if you have some stops along the way, you can either peace out at one of those stops and just meet the rest of the group at your final destination at a later time or by taking a different route where you're essentially riding by yourself or in a smaller group of people that you're comfortable with. In my case, I just broke off from the group ride a little bit early. I did my own thing for a couple hours before finally riding back. This brings me to my next best group riding hack that I figured out. If you can get to the meetup early and see the people that are pulling in, you know, who is wearing proper gear, who is not, that'll immediately tell you something about that rider. And if you have a few minutes to talk to a couple of people, you can get to know what kind of people share your riding style and which riders are likely to be doing rolling burnouts, popping wheelies, or are going to get road rage and rev bomb every innocent car driver that gets in their way. Seriously, just talk to people for a few minutes and you'll catch on quick. I actually didn't do this because I didn't think to do it until I was in the middle of the group ride and I saw another rider who was actually being more careful and a little bit more advanced in his riding style than the rest of the people. And he was also wearing some decent riding gear, which not everybody at the group ride was. So that's the kind of things I would suggest you look out for. So my goal for the ride was to try and stay as close as I could to the riders that were riding a little bit more safely rather than the riders that were weaving in and out of traffic when we were lane splitting or they were starting or stopping abruptly. So I definitely recommend being a little bit judgmental and stereotyping the riders that you think are going to be the safest and then trying to stick around those types of riders. Another huge tip is to try and avoid the herd mentality that comes with a lot of group rides. This is actually extremely difficult to do the bigger that the group ride gets. People alone on their own are really smart, but people in a group are not so smart. This is a kind of like all transcending truth when it comes to big crowds. Anyways, when it comes to combating herd mentality, I really think there's only about two tools that you have to do this. Number one is leaving your ego at the door. Nobody who already rides is gonna be impressed by how fast you can go on your leader bike. So if you pass somebody to show them how fast you can go, they're not impressed. They're now just speeding to catch up to you and now you're both speeding. Welcome to herd mentality. If one person does something dumb, it gives permission for the rest of the riders to do something dumb. So if you feel that your ego is starting to guide your right wrist, you need to adjust your mindset. Basically, calm down. Show it a chill! Just chill out, honey! But All right, the second tool you have to combat herd mentality is to adjust your position in the actual group ride. I learned from the group leader on our ride that if you stay towards the back of the pack, you're basically going to be playing the catch-up game, which means you'll be speeding to catch up to the riders in front of you the more that the group actually gets stretched out, which will naturally end up happening. So I recommend you stay in front of the pack within the first few riders. Being behind the group leader is actually ideal because you'll be limited by the pace of the ride that they set. So assuming they're not 
not crazy riders, you're gonna be using the same pace that they're at. The riders in the back of the group don't really have this pacemaker advantage because they have the whole herd in front of them. They can't really avoid herd mentality with the whole herd in front of them, but if you're towards the front of the group, you only have one or two riders in front of you, that's not really a herd. It feels like a much more cozy and more controlled ride if you're in the front. So there you have it, my three biggest secret hacks for what to do if you find yourself in the middle of a group ride that's a little bit more than what you bargained for. Let's recap. One, you can leave the ride early if it gets past your comfort level or risk tolerance. Number two, get to the meetup early and feel out who's gonna be a safe rider and who might be a crazy rider. And number three, avoid herd mentality by not showing off and staying towards the front of the group where you can't really see the rest of the herd. You can't follow herd mentality if you can't see the herd. If you wanna check out more tips and hacks videos about riding, there they are, and I will see my spicy squad in the next one.